Oh, you talking to me? Oh my bad. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And today's video is going to be all about A-levels, GCSE. This is a highly requested video, like highly requested. I'm joking, but I have got like a couple, not a couple, I've actually got loads of DMs and like, messages and comments like, oh my gosh, can you tell me what A-levels you did? Oh my gosh, what GCSE? Oh, I'm thinking about, blah, blah, blah. And I love them, so I'm happy to share my top five a levels a levels i think you should take in order to help you with your engineering degrees and i might even dabble into a bit of gcse that i can barely remember gcse so so that seems like something you're interested in carry on watching let me put my reading glasses and we shall begin i'm gonna start from top to bottom so drum roll please my top a level i think you should take is no brainer maths like maths to the T because when I tell you engineering, every engineering is in it's maths, disguised as maths, disguised as maths again, <laughs> disguised with an overlay of maths. So maths shall definitely like besides you can't really do any degree, engineering degree without having maths anyway. So like maths should already be on your top okay so the main reasons why i say maths is like like first year maths module second year maths module third year incorporated maths modules so then would it make sense for you not to do maths plus it is so like when i say we have a maths module but other modules will also require you to use that maths knowledge and so like you're really like not screwed but like a minor major setback if you can't handle the maths like, I'm not saying I can handle the maths, because listen, I've had many, 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 many cries, many, 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 many tears due to maths, <laughs> but we move. And so maths is definitely one of the A-levels you should consider. Well, I'm not sure, I'm not even gonna be around the bush. You should take maths if you wanna do, if you wanna consider engineering. And like, that includes like, because there's like differentiation, I can't remember. <laughs> differentiation integration um algebra there's even statistics so like s1 s2 c1 c2 comes up a lot c3 c4 definitely d1 seen that there um that leads me on nicely to my second on the list actually no it doesn't my set that's my third anyways second on the list will now be physics whoa 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 people always get confused which are the three sciences should i dabble in but personally i would definitely say physics because especially for civil engineering or i feel like even mechanics and aerospace physics is like the foundation of it like we're building upon it like physics is low-key embedded in all the things we do like it really brings a theory and then you can apply it and then there you have the practical okay so like with physics we had like modules such as thermo fluid and thermodynamic no th no fluid mechanics and thermodynamics we had um just a normal dynamic um module which include everything we learned in a level physics um we also have like physics is like mechanics comes up a lot especially in first year there's a lot of mechanics modules like statistics no not statistics statics um that was a big module so like physics will help you a lot and especially if you do um civil engineering in southampton what they do is like the first first year is like a foundation level not really a foundation level but like it's all it's not really anything new ish is that we're learning like mainly maths and physics we could have done in a level and like in year 13 because some of the things i was learning i did in year 13 physics and so that's why i would say take physics you hear that i would suggest you take physics um Next, let me put my reading gloves. <laughs> the next thing I would suggest you take is further maths. Even though personally I did not take further maths because that would blow my mind. Now looking back at it, do I did I even get the right grades? Could I even take further? Anyways, I'm not even gonna dwell on this. But now looking back, I definitely would have taken further maths because further maths does come in a lot. Like you know how I said we had a maths module. Yeah, my knowledge of that year twelve and year thirteen maths did help me to a certain extent. And then the other few um, chapters in that module, that was when further maths came in. And I didn't take further maths like S two D one. You might have done D one in normal maths, depending on how your school works. So like further maths does play a big role. Listen, the more maths you can do, the better. Let me scream my name. So the more maths you can do, the better, because like, it will really help you, okay? Um, so like further maths did come up in first year, it came up in second year as well. And like, it just like helps you loads throughout your degree. So 
maths first, physics second, then further maths, which leads me nicely to my fourth, which is product design. Ooh, controversy. Ooh, ooh, is that a real degree? Ooh, ooh, is that fake A level? Okay, keep calm. Okay, people love to hate on product design, okay? Oh my gosh, it's not even a real A level. Oh my gosh, what even is that? Okay, 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 listen up. I took product design A level, so I did maths, physics, and product design. And I would definitely say product design helped me loads, especially with doing civil engineering or any like engineering that's really like, that has like a d design element, which is basically all engineering. So, product design helped me, because one, helped me with my group, group work, helped me with my presentation skills, helped me with just general organization and time management, helped me with like a lot with just the design aspect of the design project. And so that's like four main things that I could list on and off all you people like, product design in real levels. Anyways, product design has helped me throughout my degree. We had one design project in first year and a construction area. Help me with the design project because I already knew most of like the, they gave us like a tutorial, like a rundown of like, um, the workstation, like the different types of tools and machines. I already knew what a CNC machine is. I knew what a water jet cutter is. I knew what like, all the handy, I just knew it because I did it in A-levels. And also like working as a team and having like a brief and a client. I already knew that because I did that for my A-level 13 project. I designed and built a pedestrian footbridge to replace the current zebra crossing. It's a long story, but if you want to know more, DM me. Anyways, but yeah, so like I would say product design helped me loads, but no one's just gonna take me seriously. I'm giving you first hand on hand information, but you're still gonna be like, product design's not really A level. Sit yourself. But I would say product design would be my fourth top A level. It's funny I put it fourth, even though I didn't actually take further. Anyways, and then last but not least. I would say chemistry. To be honest, if you think about it, there's not a lot you could fill the void in, but like if you had to choose, I would definitely say to chemistry. And because chemistry came up like a couple of times, like it was creeping out the woodworks. When you think, wait, uh, mm, chemistry, yeah, it's just embedded, slow key. And so that low keyness of it makes me think that you probably could, should take it if you did have the choice, okay? So like chemistry came up in like our chemistry module in first year. It comes up in soil, uh, mechanics with a different pH. And blah, 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 blah. So chemistry will help you loads. And like, and like, even if the module isn't actually related to chemistry, just having that chemistry background knowledge helps things a lot flow a lot quicker. Cause I'm just thinking, wait, how did we, wait, how did you guys get? No, okay, oh, oh, chemistry, okay. Yeah, I got this, thanks, thanks, thanks. So chemistry would help. So those are my top five A-levels for all of you asking me, what A-levels should you do for engineering? Maths, physics, further maths, product design, and chemistry, five. Um, so yeah, I hope this video was insightful. Oh, bear with. Someone keep asking me um, what I took for GCSE. Off the top of my mind, I can't really remember, but I'll just give it a go. Obviously, there's like the core ones you have to take, like maths. I didn't do triple science or like additional science. I just did core science. Um, I can't actually remember. Anyways, um, then I chose history, so geography. Then I chose product design GCSE, which led me to do product design A-level. Um, and then I chose P, that's it. So those are the GCSE I do. Honestly, if I could speak to you like woman to woman, woman to man, woman to whatever, um, personally GCSE really does not matter on what like pathway you want to do in like your degree. Cause like I could have done food tech and textiles and I'll still be sitting here doing civil engineering, okay? I mean like, to be fair, I had to take GCSE product design to do GCSE A level product design, but uh, that was the only thing. It doesn't really matter. So you really branch out when you want, like in GCSE, give it a go, try it, test the waters, your creative side, your maths, your scientific side, and then bang, when the shebang's over and it comes to A levels, then you probably want to tailor your A levels to be more suitable to your degree. Anyways, I whiffed, waff, waffled. I hope this video was insightful and please like, comment, subscribe. And those, do you like how I'm matching? Like, like, it's just so subtle, but it's just so there. 